In this video, I'm going to show you how I quickly analyze financial data with ChatGPT. And I'm also going to show you how you can do it with an add-in within Excel with a single click. I've talked about how to use OpenAI's uh, API and uh, analyze financial data before. Video is somewhere up here. But today, I want to show you what I usually end up doing, which is the quickest, uh, fastest way to do it. Just drop in some data, write some prompts, and... Uh, have some nice analysis or at least a good starting point to point you towards the right direction for the data that you're analyzing. And if you stick to the end, I'll show you how you can do that with your own API key within Excel, with an Excel add-in where you can define your own instructions for the AI model or use some of the predefined ones. Let's open Excel and uh, let's get started. So the way I usually go is uh, if you have access to GPT-4 or GPT-4, Oh, the newest and most advanced one, you can attach files. So for example, I have this uh, financial statement here with an income statement and a balance sheet uh, for five years. And I want to analyze that. So what I can do is I can attach this file. And once I have attached it, I can do something like generate a comprehensive summary of the company's financial health based on the provided balance sheet and income statement data, highlighting key metrics like liquidity ratios and debt levels. Send that and it would read the file, understand it and uh, start analyzing it. You can open this one and uh, you see that uh, it would use Python and uh, in this particular case, it's using the Pandas uh, framework to load the data and uh, analyze it, calculating different ratios, debt levels, profitability ratios. And it's a good thing that you can look at that because uh, you can go through it and make sure that pick the right uh, items you see here that uh, there was some error with uh, the item labels, but it's still analyzing and uh, trying out to figure out the data. You don't really need to worry yourself with all that if you're just looking for a quick analysis, but uh, because we uploaded five years worth of data, it would take some time. You see here, there's a financial summary with uh, some issues here, not a number, things like that. But uh, summary is the company's financial health based on the provided balance sheet and income statement data. The key financial ratios include, says the key financial ratios, and it asks us for further uh, analysis or uh, additional details. So what we can say here is, is the company getting better and see what it spits out. So saying that uh, we need to compare the key financial ratios at metrics over the years. And this was what I initially wanted it to do, but uh, for some reason it got hung up on calculating some of the ratios here. So it's really a trial and error. We can look at what it's doing right now. And you see that it's still facing issues, especially if it's not a structured uh, data set, like a list of invoice or things like that. I wouldn't upload files. What I'd actually do, and uh, the great part is that you can also do it with the free version, GPT 3.5. So if I start a new chat and switch to GPT 3.5, we can paste the same prompt and here just say, here's the data, and then just grab the income statement and the balance sheet and paste it here. It would look all jumbled up, but uh, it usually understands what's going on. So let's see if this works better. And you see that right away without trying to do anything fancy with uh, Python or anything, it generates a comprehensive summary, stating different things. And uh, we can even go ahead and ask additional questions, but that's how I would usually go about analyzing uh, non-structured data, like a financial statement or, or something similar. Something else that I would usually use ChatGPT is whenever I'm doing actuals versus budget, uh, I would use it to quickly guide me towards where the important parts are, especially if it's a longer statement. So we can start a new chat, we can do something like compare the provided budget forecasts against the provided actual financials, highlight significant variances, provide possible reasons for these discrepancies and suggest corrective actions. I'm gonna say, here's the data, copy this uh, entire thing here, enter, and uh, it's gonna say that uh, revenue, it's gonna calculate the variance, uh, possible reasons, corrective actions. It often makes some mistakes, especially if you're using 
3.5, the free version, but uh, at least it always gives you a good uh, idea of where to focus and uh, how to at least get started with your analysis. I really like this uh, approach. It's really simple. You just copy and paste uh, data. You don't have to format it to think about uh, importing it. And uh, you can use the free version as well. That's why into my add-in Minty Tools, I built this uh, analyze with AI feature. So the idea here is that uh, you provide your own OpenAI API key and uh, you can select one of the models or uh, which I'd recommend this, you can load the models that uh, you have access to with your API key. So you see all the models here and uh, you can use 4.0, which is the, the new model, much cheaper than GPT-4 and much better than uh, 3.5. And uh, I have some system profiles here. So this is like different uh, preset prompts that uh, you can use for your analysis. So for example, here I can say summary of financial health from balance sheet and income statement. I'm gonna run the analysis. And uh, you see actually that I didn't select what was needed. So this is the selected range here. So if I initialize this after selecting, it would work, or I can just go in here and uh, just grab everything from the income statement and the balance sheet hit OK and uh, run the analysis again. So what this does is it uses your API key to make a request to OpenAI. So you need to be certain that uh, this is data you're willing to share with uh, OpenAI, which is perfect because it allows you to pick the cost essentially. So you can use a cheaper model, you can use a more expensive model, and uh, at the same time, you're only charged by OpenAI based on your usage. So instead of uh, me charging a monthly fee and uh, you having to think if, if it's worth it for the amount of usage you're doing, you can just put in like $20 in your OpenAI uh, account and uh, casually run analysis and it's going to last for quite some time. So once I have the analysis here, it's analyzing uh, EBITDA, strong operational performance and cost control, especially in 23 and 24. So it's showing huge increases here. It's um, it's giving me some numbers and then uh, a conclusion at the end. So it's uh, again, a great starting point. I can copy the clipboard and paste it in Word, or I can just insert it as a text box here on the side, especially if it's like a shorter analysis or if it's something that uh, I'll be editing within Excel. Another one that I can do is the actuals to budget. I'm gonna hit analyze with AI. I'm gonna pre-populate the selected range. Uh, and uh, here I'm gonna use again GPT-40. And uh, from my predefined system prompts, I have this uh, budget variance analysis from budget and actual financials. And uh, keep in mind that you can edit those, save them. Uh, you can always reset the defaults and uh, you can save it as new ones. So you can add additional uh, prompt for the system. So how the system would behave and also like the user question, what are you asking? And uh, you can save that as a preset. Let's run this uh, on the actuals versus budget and see what uh, it would show. And it's calculating uh, different variances. And uh, you see the way I prompted it is that after it calculates the variance, it tells me possible reasons and also corrective actions. So once again, without any context about the business, this probably wouldn't like do a lot, but uh, it would point you in the right direction and uh, it would help you start brainstorming different uh, reasons or different uh, actions that the company can take to overcome this in the future. And let's look at another example. Here I have sales data per day for uh, three years. So uh, what I want to do is uh, using GPT-40 again, is um, I wanna analyze the revenue growth from uh, the sales data. Analyze the provided sales data to identify trends in revenue growth, including any cyclical patterns and significant changes year over year. I'm going to run the analysis on this one. It's going to show me a warning that uh, it's a large selection because those are like a lot of uh, uh, dates. It's like three years worth of uh, worth of data. And uh, it would let me know that uh, may exceed OpenAI's prompt limits. And for example, Earlier, I ran uh, this same thing on GPT 3.5 and it wouldn't work. It wasn't enough in terms of uh, the context length, but uh, 4.0 should be able to handle it. And uh, here you see it's uh, analyzing uh, revenue trends, uh, talking about significant peaks. And uh, just by scanning this, we can see that uh, there are 
probably some media promotions or specific market cycle. There are more sales around year-end, which is uh, likely driven by holiday shopping. It sees some cyclical patterns that towards the end of the month and the beginning of each uh, new month, uh, there are notable increases in sales. And uh, it's talked about year-over-year comparison and uh, doing some conclusions at the end. Once again, a great starting point uh, if you are about to analyze this uh, sales data. So we can add it here on the side, format it a bit, and start to dive deeper into all those uh, items that uh, the AI model has marked for us. This is the way I've been analyzing uh, financial data with the help of AI for quite some time now. And uh, that's why I really wanted to incorporate it in uh, my add-in, Minty Tools for Excel, and in my personal opinion, especially since I'm mostly using uh, ChatGPT for things like that or for general purposes where 3.5 works just fine, this is actually a much cheaper approach than paying the monthly subscription for uh, ChatGPT and uh, having access to those better models through their web interface. And it also has the benefit of working right within Excel without having to copy paste or upload any data. It's also worth noting that uh, Excel has some embedded AI analysis features. So I can grab this entire thing, hit this analyze data button here, and uh, it would use AI and uh, it's much more embedded. So it would give you things like uh, options to add pivot tables, uh, pivot charts, uh, some kind of other uh, statistical things. But usually if you see here frequency of calendar year 2020 makes zero sense for me. So uh, my experience has been that uh, this is usually better for statistical data or maybe for sales data, things that have like normal distributions and uh, all those other uh, statistical things that I don't really know a lot about. But uh, when I want something simple and straightforward, ChatGPT and uh, OpenAI's uh, models have been much more uh, helpful for me at least. So I know that this exists, but I'm going to disregard it at least for now and uh, we'll see how it uh, develops in the future. The other reason I prefer working uh, with uh, OpenAI's models is that uh, apart from just asking questions, I can influence the way the uh, system behaves. So for example, you saw here that uh, I have this system prompt. So this essentially tells the model how to act. And then I can ask my question on top of that. So this is a nuance that I really prefer because it allows me to have those predefined system profiles that are specifically targeted towards the types of data that I analyze instead of having like a more general approach that the integrated analyze data feature allows me within Excel. Now that you know a bit more about uh, financial analysis and how you can get some uh, guidance on where to point your attention to, it's probably time to learn more about financial modeling. And uh, I got you covered with a full four and a half hour course here that takes you step by step from an empty Excel spreadsheet all the way through to a five year dynamic assumptions driven financial model. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in this video.